Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Justin Harder and I am about to interview James Russell Lingerfelt. So let's just hop right into it. Boom, coming in. You ready to do this, man? Right now? Yeah, let's do it. It's rolling. All right, here's the mic. So let's uh, let's get you mic'd up. Appreciate it. Boom. And uh, we're gonna yeah. keep the background music if that's okay. Yeah, that's cool. I don't think that's gonna interfere with anything. Is this on? It's on. Yes, it is on. All right. So starting off with, um, what was it like growing up in rural North Alabama? Uh, I grew up in a town of 900 people on a dirt road and it was wonderful. Um, our property adjoined a state park and so me and my brother and my cousins, we had acres and acres of woodlands and pastures to run around on. It was a great way to grow up. And uh, what kind of farm animals did you have there? We had black Angus cattle and chickens. All right, and what's your favorite movies and why? I liked A Field of Dreams and It's a Wonderful Life. They, I watched them when I was a kid and then again as an adult and they meant a lot to me. All right, favorite actor? Tom Hanks. Favorite books? Favorite books? Yeah. Um, Stephen Covey's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Walden by Thoreau, or A Million Miles in a Thousand Years by Donald Miller was really good. And how many countries have you been to? 20 countries. What's your favorite uh, country? Uh, what's your favorite country you visited? Morocco. I studied abroad there. The food was really good. The people were very kind and hospitable. And um, every single thing that we experienced was flipped. It was a different music, different culture, different everything. It was great. And if I found you at a pub, what would you be drinking? Uh, either Guinness or an old fashioned. So uh, what's currently on your mind? Uh, Building my book of business and writing novels, books, and screenplays. Uh, we're planning on making a short film this spring, which I'm excited about that. It's something that I did some time ago and I loved it and can't wait to jump back on it. And uh, do you have a motto that you live by? I would say do things right and do the right things and never do something that you know is wrong. And before you do anything, ask, is this wise? What's a topic you could spend hours talking about? Probably creating stories, uh, short films, and fiction novels. What's your spirit animal? I don't have one. Okay. If you did have one? If I did have one, maybe a wolf or a fox, because I would say they're very wise, and then a fox is very clever and tries to think of things outside the box. So. Okay. What's the greatest lesson you've learned in being a writer? The importance of seeing things from different people's perspectives no matter what because it helps you understand human behavior and communicate in a way that people across cultures can understand you. What's your guilty pleasures? Uh, coffee and probably dark chocolate. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Dog. Favorite dog? Something from the Alaskan breeds, maybe a Husky or an Eskimo Spitz, but that, because that's what I grew up with. So, If you had a conversation with anyone alive today, who would it be? Probably Gary Vaynerchuk or Robert Redford, and because Gary built a business from the ground up, scaled, it, uh, scaled his dad's company from $3 million to $60 million in seven years, built his own company, and then I would like to pick Robert Redford's brain about uh, filmmaking. If you could have a conversation with any dead person, who would it be? There's so many, I wouldn't know where to start. So. Looking back on your life, is there anything that you would have done differently? No, because it's made me into the person that I am today. Okay, how do you handle regret? I don't really have regret. I just try to learn from my past experiences and make sure that I don't make the same mistakes twice. All right, where do you see yourself in 10 years? having a successful business and doing filmmaking and writing books on the side. How do you spend your mornings? Every morning I make eggs with spinach and coffee and orange juice and I go to the gym and that's my morning routine and then I'm by my phone by 9 a.m. because that's when the phone starts ringing with clients and people needing things. So, Okay, why 9 a.m.? 
9 a.m. is when the market opens, and that's just when people start calling. So, What does a lazy day look like to you? I don't really have lazy days, but if I have a day off, uh, I usually grab my friends or my girlfriend, and we go up to North Georgia in the mountains, or we go down to the beach, either in South Alabama or over to the beaches of Georgia and South Carolina. What do you like about the mountains? What do I like about what? What do you like about the mountains? Uh, the mountains are a great escape. Uh, I feel I grew up in the mountains, so I feel very much at home there, and I uh, feel at home among the people there. And I just really love being surrounded by the grandeur. What's your pet peeve about people? When they are unkind. How do you describe living in Noonan, Georgia? Noonan reminds me uh, of a town that I grew up close to called Fort Payne, Alabama and Noonan is about five times the size of Fort Payne, so I feel like I'm in just a bigger town than what I grew up in. What's the coolest place you've ever lived? The coolest place I've ever lived would probably be Malibu, California. I spent a few, few years there in grad school, and then I lived in Nashville, Tennessee for a while. That was really cool. If you weren't living in Noonan and you could live anywhere in the USA, where would it be? I would look at Fairhope, Alabama, which is a very underrated, undiscovered town on the beach. I would look at either Maine just for the experience or I would go to Alaska or Hawaii for a while. Okay. What's the last movie you saw that made you laugh so hard you cried? The movie that I laughed so hard that I cried, probably either Ace Ventura or Pet Detective, but I watched that when I was a lot younger, and Dumb and Dumber. Both of those movies, if they're on, it doesn't matter how many times I've seen them, I will sit there and watch them. All right. Funniest movie you've ever seen? One of those two. I did like Coming to America. That's, that's one that, that's another movie that I would watch over and over again. What's the movie that made you cry? I think uh, A Field of Dreams and It's a Wonderful Life both made me cry. What is it about those? Just the love of family um, and dwelling on the good things instead of the bad things. All right, in all of your travels, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen or heard? I wouldn't know where to start. All right, well, what's the weirdest food experience you've ever had? I had fried grasshoppers in Uganda, and I ate roasted goat. Uh, they were cooking it over an open flame on the side of the road in either Uganda or Kenya. And I ate rattlesnake in Alabama, and I ate sheep intestines in Scotland. What words do people use to describe you? Well, if it's coming from my friends, I hope that they say that I care, I want what's best for them, and their win is not my loss. I secretly not only root for my friends, but I root for everybody. What's a fact about you that's different that you care to share? Um, I have an uncle, a great uncle, who he was the one that laid the Alaskan pipeline for the oil and he dog sledded as a profession. That was what he did after he was a war veteran of World War II. And when he would do dog sled competitions, they were the kind of competitions where you would actually camp outside in the snow with the dogs at certain areas of the race and stay the night. So. What's a hidden talent of yours? A hidden talent, I guess, I played high school basketball and I played college lacrosse and I took it very seriously. Who do you go to for advice? I go to my older brother, uh, he's kind of my objective watch tower and whistleblower at the same time. If uh, I have a serious question about life, I'll usually bounce it off him. And what do you think you'll be remembered for? I don't know what I'll be remembered for. Uh, I don't know if I'll mind that much since I'll be gone, but I would hope that people remember me as someone that was kind to others and worked really hard when I put my hands on something. So what's something someone said about you uh, recently that wasn't true? Maybe that uh, someone said one time that I would do what it takes to succeed. That's not true. I, I wouldn't intentionally hurt someone. All right. What's something good someone said about you that was true? That I worked very hard and that I was good at what I did. So. All right. So how did you grow your business the fastest? I knocked on over 4,000 doors of people's homes for about a year and a half period, which was very hard, but I did it and it's what propelled my business the quickest. So you knocked on over 4,000 doors? Yes. Um, what's something you never saw yourself doing in a million years? Going into finance as a career. 
All right, what's something someone said to you where you felt truly honored? When I was in grad school, my mentor said that I was the kind of guy he wished his daughters would marry one day, and that, was, that meant a lot to me, and it still does to this day. So what's something you're afraid of? Probably becoming apathetic. What's something that excites you? Creating stories and uh, continually helping people through the business that I run. Do you have a hobby we haven't discussed yet? Exercising. I'm in the gym four days a week and I love traveling to other countries and experiencing cultures that I've never experienced before. If you choose another career, what would it be? Uh, probably filmmaking. I'd, I would like to work on, if I could choose another career and it would work out really well, I would want a career in making higher budget movies. Alright, and what's something that you own that, tr that you truly cherish? I would say my vehicle, it's, not, it's nothing fancy, but it gets me from A to B, so. And what's something you can't live without? I can't live without my friends. Out of all of your hobbies, what's the one thing you'd never give up? I would never give up writing and telling stories. Any hobbies you want to pick up? No, nope, I'm already doing them. So you have over 10,000 followers on social media, and you have an extensive email list of your readers. What's one thing you'd like to say to them? I would say thank you because if I hadn't have gotten the positive feedback that I'd received, I might not still be doing it. But the support early on is what made me realize that I was onto something. What's your favorite dessert? Dark chocolate. What's your favorite food? Probably Italian or Irish food. Favorite music? It depends on what mood I'm in. I'll usually listen to just about everything. Favorite fashion? I don't really have one. What advice would you give to your younger self? I would tell my younger self to listen to your gut. You're going to be right. People will say things in high school and college and even in your young professional years. That might have worked for them, but it didn't work for you. And you're going to be right and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. What's the TV show that you've recently uh, binge watched? I don't really watch television, but when I was in college, I binge watched Smallville, which was the Superman story. What's a fictional place you'd love to live in for a while? I would say uh, living in a world where the Jedi exist. I could be a, a Jedi with lightsabers and all my friends are Jedi, I guess. I don't know. Can you say anything in a foreign language? Yes. Um, wish and dig wahed kahawa nos nos. What's the coolest thing about your family? That they're very practical and have common sense and we would be there for each other through anything. What's left on your bucket list? What's left on my bucket list would be to backpack across northern Italy and visit the Norwegian area as well as the Faroe Islands and see Maine, Alaska and Hawaii. In the film industry, what's your most memorable moment? I, when I was younger, I was an extra on Dawson's Creek, and I was an extra in Tim Burton's Big Fish, and I got to talk to Tim Burton and um, Ewan McGregor, and that was a, uh, and then when I made my own short film, the music producer had produced some of the country music group Alabama's music, and while we were waiting for the film to render, we sat in the studio and we listened to music that Alabama had never released, and uh, some of the songs that I heard were amazing and I thought that if any of those songs had been released they might have been top hits but it was uh, that was that was something I'll never forget all right so what item would you take with you if your house was burning down my laptop best book you've ever written best book I've ever written right now would be called the mason jar celebrity crush I don't have a celebrity crush I'm sure I did when I was a teenager but favorite video game uh, I don't play video games What's the best dating advice you've ever received? Best dating advice would be to date somebody for a couple of years and see them in a variety of contexts and just ask yourself if you like them. Worst joke you've ever heard? Worst joke I ever heard. Um, ask me, what did the rude interrupting cow say? What did the interrupting cow <laughs> say? Oh man, that's it man. Well, it's been great learning more about you, and I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot, James.